Today, we're going to take a look at the Redivis RT52 DMR dual band handheld radio. So please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, I've been really fortunate over the last year to have the ability to review several different DMR handheld radios. Each has had their own unique features and benefits, but the latest radio that I've come into, the Redivis RT52, offers a level of familiarity and also raises the bar in the DMR world. But first, before I get into that review, I'd like to thank Redivis for sending me a review copy of the radio, and also just to let everybody know I wasn't otherwise compensated for this review, so my opinions, they're all my own. The Redivis RT52 may look quite familiar on the outside. It has the same dimensions and look as the Redivis RT3S dual band HT. In fact, just about every appearance between the RT3S and the RT52 seem identical. Same size and shape, and the same two pin connector for the speaker mic or programming cable. But the differences are apparent as soon as you turn on the radio. First off, you're greeted with a high contrast TFT screen with uh, light colored text on a black screen. This is the opposite of other DMR radios which use a bluish background with darker blue text. The high, this high contrast level makes the text a whole lot easier to read. The second big difference of the RT52 is the addition of dual push to talk operation. The radio has dual watch and dual standby so you can monitor two channels or frequencies at the same time. But instead of having to switch between the main and the subband in order to transmit, all you need to do is press one of the two independent push to talk buttons. I found this really handy. I can monitor a DMR talk group on the main band and the local analog repeater on the subband and effortlessly switch between the two when I want to take up a QSO. With these two notable features out of the way, the RT52 specs are quite similar to other DMR handhelds on the market. Features of the Redivis RT52 include VHF and UHF operation. DMR Tier 2 mode, dual push to talk, scanning, single or dual standby switch, 4,000 channels, 250 zones, 16 channels per zone, uh, SMS messaging, voice recorder, Vox operation, a power save mode, monitor button, and also with built in GPS. The RT52 comes standard with the GPS. GPS operation is enabled by default. You can turn it, but you can turn it off to extend the battery life. With the GPS, you can tag your location information with each transmission, and you can also send your location to another party using the radio's messaging feature. The radio seems to be quite power efficient, even with the GPS function turned on. The RT52 has a 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery with a belt clip integrated on the battery. I left the radio on to monitor a DMR talk group and received about uh, 24 hours of standby operation. Of course, transmitting will shorten the battery life, but otherwise I'm pretty impressed. The radio also has a power save feature that's when enabled will increase its standby time. Moving into programming, uh, the RT52 software is similar to other DMR radios. If this is your first DMR radio, I do have a video that goes through the steps in creating a code plug. You may want to check that out. I'm going to go over some of the key differences I found with the RT52. First off, you can add up to 100,000 private contacts to the radio, and the private contacts are separate from your group call contacts. I like this as you can download a list of DMR users and import them into the radio. Uh, when I imported my list into the RT52 from the AmateurRadio.Digital website, I did run into a little snag. There wasn't an RT52 specific contact file option, so I needed to do a little playing around until I found that the MD380 format worked with this radio. Other things you can do with the software is to import a custom image for the welcome screen, or remap certain function keys, and also set up a default VFO frequencies. Setting up a default frequency for the VFO is a feature I haven't seen on other DMR radios, other than the Islands HD1, which has that feature. And the RT52 can do that also. One thing I didn't like about the software is that it has an import and export buttons for the channels and contacts, but the import process doesn't seem to be compatible with anything else. Why can't there be some sort of standard so that you can easily import your code plug from one radio to another? So breaking it down, this is what I like about the Redivis RT52. Compact size with a good physical layout, sharp, easy to read display, dual watch with a dual push to talk button, loud audio, and of course that built-in GPS. Downside of the RT52 are 
you know, programming software is not compatible with other models. The volume can't be controlled independently for the main and the sub bands. Only 16 channels per zone. Uh, enabling the GPS is going to shorten your battery life. And also, speaking of the battery, the belt clip is integrated as part of the battery. So where does the RT-52 fit in the Redivis DMR radio lineup? Well, I feel that this model is almost a replacement to the RT-3S. They have similar price points, yet the RT-52 has a better screen and the dual push-to-talk feature. So really, the RT-52 could be an entry-level DMR radio, as it doesn't have the weatherproofing like the RT-82 or the advanced features and power of the larger Islands HD-1. Uh, the RT-52 would be an excellent choice as your first DMR handheld or as an inexpensive second or spare radio to round out your collection. Overall, I'm happy with the operation of the RT-52. If I had my choice between the RT-3S and the RT-52, I'd go with the RT-52 route just for the better screen. The dual push-to-talk feature is also a nice bonus. The Redivis RT-52 dual band DMR handheld radio is available online from redivis.com and links are in the description below. Do you have any questions about the Redivis RT-52? Well, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them and also highlight a few of the best ones in my monthly question and answer video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production for future videos. So if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to check out some of those other videos that are recommended alongside here. And finally, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Pressing subscribe will help notify you when future videos are released. Well, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day in 73.